So in our first lecture, we have spoken about resonance forms, okay? And we said that a number of molecules or ions can have different structures. But up till now, we have not as yet discussed how to draw these. Now, there are three rules that we have to follow. The octet rule, okay? So each atom must have eight electrons. So we're still going to get one atom where it has eight electrons. That's going to be more stable than any of, any of the other structures, okay? So the octet rule always wins, okay? It's the most important rule that we have. Then, let's say you have structures that both have the octet rule, okay? The charge must be on the most electronegative atom. Okay, so if you have an oxygen, for example, the carbonate, okay, we have a situation where the oxygens will carry the charge. Okay, immediately you will put the charges on the oxygen and then that will be a double bond. Okay, as a resonance form, then there are three equivalent structures. Okay, and the charge can actually go from one place to the other. Of course, if you can avoid having charges, avoid having charges. Sometimes you can have, for example, last year you had done the aromatic ring. Okay, and in the aromatic ring, you do have the mesomeric effect. And in the mesomeric effect, you have charge separation. It's there, but it's not the best situation, okay? So these resonance forms both exist. But of course, these resonance forms are in equal. This is the major, and this is the minor. Now, keeping these three in mind, as students, you will be, can you see ozone and cyanide there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Keeping these three in mind, you will need to be able to draw structures. Now, let's start with the cyanide, okay? Because I think the cyanide is a bit easier. Cyanide is going to be Okay, so you have the nitrogen and the carbon. So either I draw an, I've drawn the triple bond to satisfy the nitrogen, the carbon would have an extra electron for itself and an electron coming for, for the negative charge. So this is having the C triple bond N and the negative charge on the carbon. Okay, now of course, we need to make sure that we can have something else, okay? And normally, to remove the charge, normally, to move the charge, you would need to move the bond, okay? So that goes there, and that goes there. Okay, or eventually, that would be just one bond there. And in this situation, you will have C okay, and this would be C double bond and with a negative charge on the nitrogen. Now, the most stable one would be that, okay? Because this does not obey the octet rule, okay? There are, there is another one where you will have a dative bond, I believe, okay? But cyanide is that one. Now, anytime, 
any time where we are actually going to be speaking about these resonance forms, okay? Because this is actually very important. Always make sure to do what? Always make sure that you can actually get to more than one, okay? Why? Because a lot of times, a lot of times, students get lost and they start thinking about, but aren't these the same? Aren't these not gonna be equivalent? Resonance forms, in their own definition, they are not equivalent, okay? So resonance forms, in their own definition, they are not equivalent, okay? You have things like carbonates or nitrates or sulfates where you have the carbon oxygen bonds and they are all equal. But normally resonance forms, they are not equivalent, okay? And in fact, reactivities in chemistry will arise because of these differences. Now, ozone is a bit harder because ozone is something that you will probably not have seen or not have drawn before. Some of you might have drawn it at A level. Now, this is what I normally do, okay? So normally, I tell students, ozone, it has no charges, okay? So try to get the outer oxygens, okay? The outer oxygens to be happy. So the outer oxygens must give two electrons. And this is a start. Okay, and this is a start. Let's draw these differently so we know where the electrons are coming from. Now, in this situation, okay, in this situation, they are all neutered because they all wanted to gain. Sorry, they all, they all, they all have the six electrons. Now, of course, this oxygen here doesn't have eight electrons, okay? The oxygen there does not have eight electrons. The oxygen there has two, four, six, eight, ten. So it can lose two electrons, okay? And this is how I normally start drawing these out. And this would result, okay, from this arrow, as a negative and a positive, okay? So ozone, in fact, it has some charge separation. So this follows octet rule, okay, for all of them. All of them have eight electrons, whereas the first one, it follows no charge separation but the octet rule is more important. Instead of doing the yellow arrow, we could have done the red arrow, but it would have given the same exact structure, okay? Now, what I want you to look at and to note is this, and I will be using a little bit the Volhard here, okay? So on the Volhard, you do have the ozone one, okay? And, but I don't think they start, they explain how to draw it. In fact, the method they give, although similar, okay? They use electron counting. I stay clear of electron counting normally because in some cases that might hinder your progress. Okay, so what I do is I make sure that all the atoms are happy. Okay, they all have, the outer atoms all have eight electrons. And from there on, I start pushing electrons around so that I have the eight points. Remember, 
this one, the one, the one in yellow, would be equivalent to that. Okay, so these two are the same. Those two are the same. Having drawn O3 as a sketch, now here, please listen carefully. Please do note it down that this is a sketch. Okay, do not give it as one of the resonance forms. There are two resonance forms for ozone. Okay, I give look on neck, some has room. There are two resonance forms for ozone, and they are this one. Okay, so please do note that the other one was a sketch. Okay, it's like you're doing it in my exam, I know, and most lecturers will. But just to give you a heads up. Now, something will commonly find in materials, okay, for reactions from record mechanisms are things like these enone, okay? And enone is an alkene with a carbonyl group. And these are very interesting because we can start from the electrons on the oxygen, okay? And we can push electrons through. So the oxygen can have a negative charge. Because it can, have, can, it can have a negative charge, we can add the electrons from the double bond to the oxygen. This can only happen if the oxygen is neutral. Okay, that's why I'm telling you, you can start from seeing what, elect what, what electrons you've got. Now, which one would be the major product? Is it A or B? A. A. A, okay? Because A has no charge separation, okay? Because A has no charge separation. On the other one, we're gonna push electrons from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. So lone pairs, double bond to the positive charge. And here, you end up getting this. Let me draw it as it were in the original one. Okay, so we just moved, we just moved the charge around. But which one, is it C or D? Try to use chat, okay? And see whether you think A or C is more stable or D is more stable. I'm not gonna ask you why. Okay. Have a little bit of a thought about it. I mean, I only had three replies up till now. Okay, a few more.
Okay. I would like to tell you that it's D. Now, a lot of you, in fact, asked, is it C because of the oxygen rule? Now, yes, you don't want the charge to be on the oxygen, but if you were to look at C, okay, the carbon has six electrons. So, I don't know what happened. The carbon has six electrons, okay? Now, it has six electrons, and we don't normally draw this, but it is two electrons there, two electrons there, two electrons there. And in fact, we can normally take it as an assumption that all carbocations have six electrons, okay? All carbocations have six electrons. On the other hand, if you were to to look at the oxygen here, the oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So it follows the octet rule anyway. And the carbon now has two, four, six, eight. And it follows the octet rule as well. Okay. This is, I think, for now, don't worry too much about it. Okay, you'll have examples and we will be discussing these when we do mechanisms, if you do them with me. But every time you have something like this, it's important because this will actually influence the site of attack. Okay, this will actually influence the site of attack. So let's say we have a nucleophile. Let's say we have a nucleophile. The nucleophile, okay, its main purpose would be to attack a positive site. So it can easily have the flow of electrons like that, okay? And it will make, in fact, um, ox oh, hydrogens on carbons adjacent to an, to an ether group to be highly acidic, okay? Because of these resonance forms. Now, let's see, any comments? If you have any comments, please, Ask. No, the electron density, I mean, it plays a part, but having eight electrons is more important than the electron density. Okay? So the electron density, we don't normally use it a lot in organic chemistry because in organic chemistry, the electron density for carbon, it's normally the same. Okay? And we're dealing with carbon, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, maybe carbon, halogens. And for the, for the electron density, it's there they are normally the same, okay? There will be a bit of a role in the second semester about densities and charges, but for now, it's not as important. I'm not too sure what you're saying. There's a negative charge. I can't see any negative charges on this page. Because remember, the positive charges and negative charges, they don't arise because you have eight electrons less or more. So if we have this oxygen, okay, let's actually have it here. The oxygen, oh no, I'm not, let's be changed color now because this color is not good. So the oxygen had a double bond, a single bond, and a long pair. One of the double bonds, which is actually a dative bond, because it's for sharing its own electrons. So this oxygen now has of its own, okay? We consider that each bond represents two electrons. One for atom A, so if we have a bond between A and B, that's one electron for A and one electron for B. So in this situation, we have, we end up having one, two, three, four, five. So instead of having six electrons, the oxygen has five. Therefore, it has one more proton because the nucleus did not change, then it was supposed to have electrons. Therefore, it will be a positive charge. Okay, Sir Pisani. 
Uh -huh. So the bond so counts as two, but for the charge, it counts as one, essentially. No, the bond is two electrons. But if you're sharing two electrons between two atoms, it's going to correspond to one electron each, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so it will count as one for the oxygen and one for the carbon, or one for, yes, these are, these are all carbons. Okay, Gabriel. Okay. Okay, remember there were carbons there. CH3 and this was a CH. Okay, in fact, look at this carbon. That carbon has four bonds, four electrons, and it normally has four electrons. This carbon has four bonds. That's why it's neutral. It normally has four electrons. And if we look at this carbon up here, okay, it has three bonds, three electrons, therefore it's missing one electron. Okay. Okay, good. Now, the last thing I wanted to do to do for today, now I have lost track of time, so. Yes, that's fine. Was doing these structures. I will not be naming them because if I were to name them right now with the mirror images, I will fuck everything up. But what I wanted to tell you is this. Okay, and this is something where I think I had a couple of students ask me something similar. Let it, these two, all I changed was the functional group up here. Okay, now having changed this functional group up there, I might change the R and S nomenclature. Okay, so it might shift from R to S. So if something is R and you have a reaction, it does not mean its product will also be R. You need to see one different group can make a lot of difference. And here, okay, you can start with one, two, three, four. And this is one, two, three, four. Okay. And this is as it currently stands. So black, blue, red, white. The blue. The left's opposite, so the black's on the left. Sorry. Let me look at the video. Uh, this is gonna go. This is gonna take minutes. Just, just remove the black and the red and just switch them. No, it's not about. I I need to see what you're seeing, and I need to understand what you're seeing first. Well, why don't you um, turn and uh, kind of do, put it up in the air? <laughs> I think so. Jag kan inte ha graf och palissa. Jag vill inte kunna flytta mig. Så. Red, black, blue. Jag kan inte red, black, blue, right? Nej, sorry. Välkommen. Okay, let me explain how to do it, okay? And you can do this at home. Sir, I don't know The thing is this. However I do it, if I change the colors and you do, that, do it at home, what did you call the loop? No, because we're seeing what's on the what you do. Ara, let's say you're doing it at home. The OH is going inside. By the way, I have requested. I know 
it might not be possible for everyone, but I have requested that for the second semester, you will come here. Okay, Halle, United Communist. I have requested that because next semester, even lectures are gonna be harder. Okay, I have also requested to have the lectures as a two hour slot rather than one and one, which will help you. Okay, so that should be for your benefit. But what I wanted to say is this, in these two, okay, can you see that the groups three and four have changed? So this was four here, and this is three. Yes, yes. So what happens here is this. Because the groups are changing, because the groups have changed, the naming will change. So I wanted to say this, okay? So these just rotate them around. It won't be a problem. I do not want on a recording to do it, even with shifting the sides, because I think it's gonna be the opposite, okay? Um, so I will. I have a nap at home where I can invert them. So I will record, when I record the video for your tutorial sheet, I will record this as well, because that's easy to invert once, once, once I'm editing. Now, what I wanted to do is this, what I wanted to note is this. If I shifted these two together, it's gonna to go from R to S or S to R, okay? Meaning changing a group can change the nomenclature. I'm saying this because it's not the first time. I've seen this in second years and I've seen it in third years as well, where you have the name and to try and hurry up, what do they do? We are much sharp Dana, so let's continue with her. We vamos s Dana, so let's continue with this. And using that, they end up messing and missing out on a lot of marks. Okay. Now, I'll stop the recording. <laughs>